Okay, we're out on uh, Spring Bar. It's the 16th of November 2011. We're at the gravel extraction site of 2008 and uh, it looks as if uh, a fairly significant portion of the hole is still here. Relative to last year though, with the sustained and long drawn out freshet of uh, 2011, we had about uh, three or four months of 10,000 cubic meters per second. The upper end of the hole that was very large in 2010 appears to have filled in. Uh, so this is, there's been quite a bit of deposition of sand. This would have been a, a bit of a, a slow zone, slower deposition. Uh, there was a bar that's formed or uh, a, um, a remnant of the old bar and a channel has cut through. Last year we had a smaller channel cutting through at the top end but that appears to have been filled in by gravel. So there is some reconstitution of the bar from 2008 extraction, but there still is this lower end, which is quite uh, large compared to uh, pre-extraction uh, morphology. There was some thought when they did this project here that it was going to swing the water more over here onto the left bank, but it looks like maybe it's uh, over the right-hand side here. Well, I think uh, you have to be careful about saying whether there's more water or less water until you've actually surveyed it. But uh, visually it does look like there's still quite a bit of water going to the right bank and uh, the bulk of the water hasn't been shifted over to the left bank and that's, it's not really clear why that's happened. Uh, in years earlier to 2008 there was quite a bit of gravel taken uh, just above the bar, so on the left bank at the top end of Seabird Island. So whether that had an influence on the channel shifting you know, I don't know, you'd have to talk to a fluvial geomorph, they might be able to give us more uh, of an understanding, but it certainly hasn't flipped the whole river to the left bank. Uh, there is a fairly significant split on either side. So just as a recap there, what do you think, uh, you know, has happened majorly since, uh, since the, from pre-extraction to extraction till now? Well, the, the, the body of the bar hasn't recovered yet, but, you know, we can see that. There's a lot of heterogeneity, a lot of uh, diversity to what is remaining here, which might be a good thing for fish, you know, um, but certainly that high top bar habitat, which I, I personally think is uh, limiting uh, or is limited in the gravel reach, hasn't recovered yet, but um, I guess it remains to be seen. Uh, it really, we need physical surveys, so surveyors to come out to really show the pre and post to make a definitive statement in terms of recovery. And will that happen, you think? Well, I hope, I hope so. I think in the, uh, in the authorizations there was uh, requirements for, for surveys, so hopefully that will happen and we'll be able to, see. you know, monitoring is really important to try and figure out what's happening here. It's, um, <coughs> it's easy to say, well, we were out here and looked at it, but I think hard numbers are the only way that you can really make definitive statements. Very good then. Okay. Zone, so we've had water dropping into the uh, into the hole that's left over by the uh, by the extraction. 